I'm Chris Savage, and this is Savage Circuits TV. This episode of Savage Circuits TV was brought to you by Sony Creative Software. Visit them on the web at sonycreativesoftware.com. Let's go ahead and download the ADC program real quick here so you can see what it does. Uh, basically, it just uh, it reads the two channels, it displays the raw counts and the voltage is on it. Now what I have hooked up here is I have a potentiometer hooked up as a voltage divider with one end of the potentiometer connected to ground and the other end connected to uh, 5 volts and then the center tap is connected to the input to channel 0. So as I rotate this potentiometer between each extreme uh, the voltage going into the ADC is between 0 and 5 volts and you, you can see the count change and the voltage on the debug screen. All right, and now for the main loop of our merged program. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the elements that we needed from the bar graph code and the ADC code and create a new main loop. Now, I've already done that here, so I'm going to just go ahead and paste that in. But basically what you have is you have an outer do and loop. So the, the main code in here is going to run infinitely, which is typical of a, of a normal microcontroller program. Now, what we did was, if you remember, from the ADC code, we need to set the, the channel that we're going to read. All we care about is channel zero here because we only have one input at this point. And then once the channel's been set, we can go sub to our read ADC routine. Now, it's important to know that the read ADC routine sets a variable called result. And so when we come back to our, our main uh, loop here, when we return from this go sub, uh, result will be set with the value from the ADC, but our display graph subroutine uses a different variable called index. So right here we're going to copy the result into index and then call the subroutine to draw the, the graph on the LCD. And then a small pause will, will happen so that, you know, it, it, the display isn't too jittery. And that's pretty much it. That's the, that's the main loop, and uh, we'll go ahead and download this so you can see it run. Okay, now, uh, one final thing on merging programs. I mentioned possible conflicts with I.O. lines here, and in this particular program we didn't have any issues. Uh, but it's, it's important to note that you can also have conflicts with um, constants, not by the values. You can have two constants that have the same value. You can have three or four. Uh, what's important is that you don't, have, you don't define the constant twice. Like you don't have baud defined and then again later baud redefined. Um, you can also have conflicts with variables. So again, we didn't really have a conflict here. All of our variable names were unique. But besides conflicting variable names, what you can also have is you can also use up too many bytes of variable space. Now what we're using here is there's four word variables, so that's eight bytes, uh, plus two more bytes, that's 10 and a nibble. So that's well within the limitations of the basic stamps, 26 bytes. But it might be possible if you merge two programs to actually use up more variable space than what the basic stamp can allocate, so that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, and EEPROM data, EEPROM data. Again, only the LCD bar graph section had EEPROM data, um, and usually that data is referenced by these labels over here, but it is possible on larger programs to, to add a considerable amount of EEPROM data, and a larger program have the EEPROM data collide from the bottom of memory growing up with the program memory, which on the basic stamp grows down in memory. Once the two collide, uh, if you try to look at the memory map or download the program or compile it, you'll get an error that says 
uh, data occupies the same space as program. Um, other places you can have uh, conflicts is in your subroutine section. And usually you'll catch this with the variables because if your subroutines are using common variables, um, you can actually overwrite a variable that you didn't intend to. So for example, in the previous uh, code we, we used result for the ADC and we used index um, for, the, for the display uh, of the graph. But if we had used index here, um, it would have worked in this particular application, but you'd be overwriting a variable potentially. So just something to keep an eye on as well. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions on the uh, programs, on any of the methods used to combine the two programs, or any suggestions, you can leave a message in the uh, forum thread for this episode of Savage Circuits TV. I'm Chris Savage, and we'll see you next time.